Epilepsy, also known as a seizure disorder, is a brain condition that causes recurring seizures. There are many types of epilepsy and symptoms can vary. Some people lose awareness during a seizure and some experience convulsions where their arms and legs twitch. Others may stare blankly for a few seconds. Some causes of epilepsy can be identified and some cannot. Epilepsy does not discriminate. It can affect people of every gender, race, age, and ethnic background. Up to 70% of epilepsies are caused by genetic factors. Most rare forms of epilepsy can be traced back to a gene that is not functioning properly. One rare form can be traced back to the KCNE2 gene. The KCNE2 gene is related to the potassium channels in the brain. These channels are responsible for transporting potassium in and out of brain cells. We all have the KCNA2 gene. When our KCNA2 gene is functioning properly, the flow of potassium is regulated, allowing the cells to transmit electrical signals accurately. When the gene is not functioning the way it should, a rare form of epilepsy can occur. We call this rare form of epilepsy KCNA2 epilepsy. This occurs when there is a variation in how the gene functions. This all starts as the baby is developing in utero. It is possible that the KCNA2 gene developed out of sequence. There are many ways the gene could have changed during development and any of these changes can cause the flow of potassium to become irregular or sporadic. The three types of KCNA2 that are known today are referred to as gain, loss, and mix of function. With the gain of function type, the potassium channel is open more than it should be, causing an increase of potassium available to the brain. With the loss of function type, the channel is closed more than it should be, resulting in a decrease of potassium available to the brain. With the mix of function type, the channel does both, causing the channel to randomly provide too much and sometimes too little potassium available to the brain. Some people diagnosed with KCNA2 have not been told their type. This may be because their specific mutation is so rare it has not yet been categorized. KCNA2 epilepsy was first discovered on August 31st, 2012. The mutation in the KCNA2 gene was discovered by a team of researchers led by Stefan Serbe, a pediatric neurologist from Heidelberg University in Germany. It wasn't until three years later in 2015 that the gene was finally included in genetic testing. This made it possible for people to be diagnosed with KCNA2 epilepsy. Many symptoms can occur with all three types of KCNA2 epilepsy. Seizures, often resistant to medications, speech difficulties with sound and language, ataxia, which is difficulty with balance, learning skills and retaining new skills, sleep problems due to seizures and sometimes due to the side effects of medications, developmental delays in almost every area. You are telling me what you want. Muscle control problems are also common, making it difficult to sit upright or control one's muscles to stand, walk, talk, or to control the movement of their eyes. Many diagnosed with KCNA2 epilepsy experience seizures, sometimes daily. This next video is an illustration of a mom calming her son through a tonic-clonic seizure. Viewer discretion is advised. It's okay, buddy. You're having a seizure. 
It's okay. It's okay, bud. It's okay. It started out as a... It's okay. Good deep breath. It's okay. Breathe. Good boy. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It started out as a focal seizure where he started to fuss. I could hear him cry, get scared, and then his head turned to the left, and the left arm and leg were starting to curl or contract a little bit. And then um, I sang to him, and then all of a sudden it just couldn't, it couldn't stop there. It went into like a full clonic as well, tonic clonic. Sometimes seizures are followed up by hospital stays. Many therapeutic modalities are used for years. Seizures caused by KCNA2 epilepsy are difficult to control. Because of this, many medications are tried, and often individuals are prescribed multiple medications to achieve the best seizure control possible. After 2015, families from around the world started to receive a diagnosis of this rare form of epilepsy. To bring everyone together, KCNA2 epilepsy was launched. This is who we are today. As of 2024, we are aware of at least 200 people around the world diagnosed with KCNA2. The number is increasing as genetic testing continues. Our goal is for all KCNA2 families to find us. Families have reported a variety of symptoms. We also have a strong media presence. Our website provides information about KCNA2 in many languages. We have a dynamic board of directors and a world-renowned scientific board who are actively conducting KCNA2 research. The funds we raise go directly to support our organization, research effective treatments, and to find a cure. Our families from around the world are grateful for your support. Thank you.